all right don't mind me i'm out of breath um trying to get on the road get to the track got to pick up uh, pick up deadpool z06 and try to get some e85 let's get rolling
They had two runs of the night. Four miles per hour. Yeah, I ran, I ran like 11 miles per hour. I ain't look at car too long. For me, I ain't look at car too long. I, I, I just, you know, the launch. Fuck it. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I, like, I, I ain't never. I bought, I bought a little bit, but my sister came out better than I said, my face. That was awful. I, God damn it, yo. <laughs> but it's your first time on the pack, though. So. Yeah. I just wish I had a car. Feel good after this. Ah. All right, so no, it's not the best angle, but honestly, I don't feel like breaking out the tripod or anything like that for such a quick explanation. But uh, basically, as you saw, we went to the track. That was Friday. It was Midnight Madness for uh, for our track, uh, which is an event where you drift, you drag um, for around about five hours uh, or four and a half hours, whatever you want to say. Um. So pretty much, you know, actually we were there earlier than we've ever been. Uh, we was pretty much there before the gates even opened. And um, got in line, put the cars over to the side. Well, got taken in, put the cars over to the side. Um, pretty much let the cars cool down, met up with each other, you know, greeted each other, stuff like that. But as the time went on, uh, what had happened is, what you'll see in the video is that I want to say, we'll say a race truck, race car. Not a pro mod or anything like that, but a fully tubbed out, purposely built uh, race car blew his motor in the right lane. And when I say blew the motor, they completely blew it. Parts were everywhere all over the track. Um, and it was preferably towards the end of the track. I don't know if the guy stopped. It didn't look like he stopped at all. He kept going. So parts and oil everywhere. So basically they shut the track down for about an hour and a half and actually had to burn, I think had to burn the oil off or stuff like that, um, pick up the parts, um, you know, drag the track, prep the track, everything, which took it, like I said, an hour and a half, which was a lot of downtime. So I want to say we were down, just, I mean, that was at least a quarter of the time, not even more than a quarter of the time. And then you had people in line already, uh, and you know, just waiting. So we on we only managed to get two runs in. Uh, as y'all know, I'm not one to run the car when it's uh, heat soaked. So I I think we actually got there and got taken in. Everything it was about 7:30, maybe maybe. Don't quote me on the time, but it was 7:30. I was like, cool. We're gonna let the cars cool down. We went on and air tires out, uh, air the tires down. I let the ice cycle, everything. So when it was about, I want to say. 8 30 um you know at that time you was like okay it, it, it may be time to actually go ahead and get in line and make a pass so we ended up going to peek uh peep out one of the guys uh in the ctsv make a pass you know he's not very track oriented we'll put it that way um so <clears throat> went up there to help him and things like that he was in line he's waiting his turn to go and then that's when the truck or car blew his motor so we stood there they finally got back up and going. You had everybody in line. We started to make our way to the car. Now, by this time, the car has cooled down maybe two and a half hours almost. So we get in the car and make you know make a pass. Um, and I don't know if I showed the time slip or not actually, because um, I'm not one to share my time slips uh, with everyone. But the car mile per hour about five four to five miles higher than it's normally been, which means that I was doing my job for our shifting and things like that. Um, and the, mind you, the car was on pump, not E85, just pump. Um, so the last couple times we've been going to the track, it's been on E85, but I guess I wasn't doing the best job I could uh, shifting wise and stuff like that. So this time we cut it down um, a mile per hour, about four to five miles per hour higher, um, which, in my, which in my eyes is wonderful because it's just, t in my mind, once we go back to E85 and once we, you know, actually get the 60 foot down, I've been cutting horrible 60 foots. Uh, haven't had a, a glory 60 foot since probably the second time I took it out to the track. Um, but like I said, um, we'll cut the 60, if we can get the 60 foot down and if we can go ahead and, uh, you know, make sure the shifts on point, we can get a couple more mile per hour out of it. And see what time we can get. It kind of motivated me to actually go to the track on just pump instead of just going full out on E. But 
Um, you know, we'll see how far we can get it down. I kind of do want to take it back on E and see what a mile per hour it hit, even with the um, undesired 60 foots. But we'll see how it goes, man. But just wanted to explain what happened, why there wasn't as much foot as it could have been. And uh, also, uh, shout out to Deadpool Z06, who um, pretty much filmed the majority of my footage um, just because... I don't know. Once the the guy blew his motor and things like that, you kind of try to put the camera down and actually get your runs in. I was choked up, and I left both my uh, micro SD cards for my GoPros at home. Had the GoPros, had the batteries, forgot the SD cards. Garbage. I forgot the suction cup. It was just a complete fail as far as outside footage and actually of the car footage. So, shout out to Deadpool Z06 uh, for providing the footage and... Uh, you know, if you go to his see his channel, make sure you check out the channel. He's fairly new, but if you go check out his channel, I'm surprised you see some of the same footages because he did most of the filming, which I appreciate. It's my guy. But y'all make sure y'all check it out. Make sure y'all check out my boy Interior's Cam as well. 